to sit home and play a little bit of bass, a little piano and stuff like that. I'm sorry to do this to you, but that line was from a tune, uh, the Jaco Pastorius did, one of the first tunes he ever did when he pulled the frets out of his bass called I Can Dig It Baby, and it was by Little Beaver. And Little Beaver was one of my favorite artists out of Miami, and his name was really Willie Hale, but he was known as Little Beaver. And uh, Jaco and I both have that in common. We love Little Beaver, we loved a lot of the R&B that was coming uh, over the airs in the Miami stations back in the day. There was a station called WMBM and one called WAME, and they were the black R&B stations, and we both loved that. So the first time that I met Jocko, I was uh, doing an audition with my band with this guy, Bobby Caldwell, and Kenny Zale, and Bob Jabba. We had a band called Katmandu in a club in Fort Lauderdale. And I was mainly a Hammond organ player and just an okay one. But we had a pretty good band and we were doing original material and uh, Jocko liked the band. But um, what, what happened was we did an audition and our manager was talking to the club owner and the guys from my group stepped outside to take a little break. And this was the 60s and we were uh, looking for something to uh, do to kind of relax us a little bit. So we smoked the joint and came back in. And all of a sudden I hear this guy playing on my organ, the Hammond V3, and this guy's like killing it. And uh, I go up to him and I go, man, who are you? What's your name? And he goes, oh, my name's Jocko. And I said, man, you sound great. I mean, you're unbelievable. And he goes, you know, I'm a bass player. And I went, oh, fantastic. You know, what does that make me? I mean, you know, I feel like Thumbs Carlisle playing the organ uh, next to this guy, you know, who's just killing it, and that's not even his main instrument. We found out that we both love the R&B, we love these stations and Little Beaver and all that, and um, so uh, we shared that and we had a lot of conversations about it. And over the years, the band that I was playing with and Jocko's band called Woodchuck, which was a three-piece band, it was him, this guy Billy Burke on Hammond organ, and Bob Herzog on drums and vocals. We would play in the same clubs in Miami. And uh, we shared many gigs together. And a lot of times, you know, when we were playing, Jocko would come in and he would sit in with us. And one tune that he would like to do uh, when he sat in was It's Your Thing by the Isley Brothers. And the bass line, and again, forgive me, is... <laughs> Jocko, of course, would take it and be Jocko and groove it to death and all that. So, um, again, you know, it was an experience knowing him. And when he did this tune, I Can Dig a Baby, he had pulled the frets out of his bass. And Little Beaver, who had known him just as Jocko, didn't even know his last name, didn't even give him credit on the record as Jocko Pastorius. He gave him credit as Jocko Padron. Somebody must have told him that Padron was his last name. So I don't know. It was, uh, you know, just serendipitous. But if you want to hear some cool stuff, check out Little Beaver. Um, you can get them on the internet, on YouTube and stuff like that. I Can Dig It Baby. One of the first times Jocko ever played fretless, probably the first time he ever played fretless on record. So I'm here sitting around, kind of bored, playing, and uh, trying to avoid arguments with Marlene. And of course, you know, uh, that's not always easy. And one thing I just want to say, we've been married 51 years. So I try to avoid the trick questions. So just as an example, the trick questions are, does this dress make my backside look too big? And there's no answer to that because I go, no, no, you look just fine. You look beautiful. And she'll go, no, I don't. I, you know, you're telling me a lie. That's not true. And then she goes, uh, 
does this, uh, do I look good with this or that? And I try to be kind of uh, some type of a, you know, diplomat and kind of, I know whatever I say is going to lead me to trouble. And I'm basically a pretty easy guy to get along with. Marlene will be happy to tell you that. And I always say, uh, yes, dear, whatever. And Marlene, what do you think? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty easy, aren't I? You're full of it. Thank you. Uh, a comment from Marlene. She says, I'm full of it. But I do try to be easy. She says, what would you like for lunch? And I go, uh, whatever you'd like to make, dear. Because I know if I say something, she goes, you know, if I make that, it's going to take me a long time and it's a lot of work and you don't do anything. Let's finish this video. We want to finish this video for Marley. So I just want to say 51 years, the best thing to do is be a diplomat. If they ask you the question, don't even give an answer. Just sit there like a mute and go, because whatever you say is going to get you in trouble. And once again, Marlene, do I do as I'm told? No. Do I? No. Finish. It's too long. This video is too long. All right. Well, there you go. From my producer, my video producer, Marlene, I can't do anything right. I haven't done anything right in 51 years, but we get along in our own way. I love Marlene. And uh, she's my... He said I cut him off. All right. So Marlene cut me off, but... We're going to take it from the very end so we have a smooth ending. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching the videos. Please behave. Do what you got to do to stay healthy. And uh, if you go crazy, uh, just remember, whoever you're in the house with, just say, yes, yes, dear, I'll do that. And when she asks if there's anything that you have to comment on, just be a diplomat. Love you guys. Thank you.